All right, so we've been doing a lot with quadratics. They look like this. They've got important spots like that and that. Uh, that is the, what's it called? The vertex, also known as the what in this case? Maximum, very good. This is not where the ball landed. It is what? When? Because this is time versus height. All right. So that's the basics. Now, what do the equations look like? Well, they always have a negative because these are upside down parabolas. So it's negative something. And this is new and it's worth you taking notes on. I'm going to show you where the equation, where the parts of the equation come from. All right. It always starts with negative one half. And then you put in the gravitational constant which it either is 32 or it's 16. And that depends on, oh wait, I'm wrong. 32 or 9.8, 32 or 9.8. 32 is in feet and 9.8 is in meters. So if you're gonna use, like if you're doing this problem in England, you'd be using 9.8. All right, next one. We need x squared because it is a parabola, right? And the next thing you need is the velocity. We call it V0 for the velocity. Initial velocity. You have, to, you have to think through a lot of stuff on this. So initial just means first velocity. That's like on a gun, there's what they measure what's called muzzle velocity. That means that what speed is that bullet leaving the end of the gun? Right? Uh, if you're in the circus and you're blasting somebody out of a giant cannon you guys do that okay shoot people off the screen okay now the shooting out of a giant cannon they aren't actually they make a big loud explosion noise and all that but they aren't actually having an explosion in the cannon um what they do on that is basically it's just a uh hydraulic like it's pushing them really fast it's like a like a stair step machine except at extreme speed so it just like launches them from down in the cannon shoot up to the top. Okay, well, the speed that you got shot out of the cannon at is going to depend. I mean, the whole human body can only take so much speed before it, like, if you push somebody too, too fast, they would just crumple. It, you know what I mean? Like, you, you couldn't stand the, the speed. So, uh, I know what you mean. Yes, if you built it up, you could actually get the person going faster and faster and faster. And they do actually launch some people insane distances, like, all the way across auditoriums. Like, like they can launch people all the way across our gym, like, from one end to the other. The what? Okay. All right. So anyway, they can launch people long distances and they're going to have them like land in, in big piles of uh, um, cushy things uh, like foam and whatever. All right. So the initial velocity is the starting speed. Do you get that if you start them going really, really fast that they're not going to keep going that same speed forever? Just going to slow down, right? So that's why like a muzzle velocity on a gun is the fastest that it goes. After that, the bullet just slows down, slows down, slows down, and eventually stops. Of course. Um, now, the initial velocity is starting velocity. And the last thing that you need to know is this, which is the number at the end, which is a constant. And it is, I can't remember what letter they use, but it's a, it's a number. And it is the initial height. That means how far off the ground are you in the first place? So if my graph kind of looks like this, here is the, the ball. It's a, to keep it simple and say it's a ball that somebody's throwing up here. And it starts up like four feet off the ground because the guy's holding his hand. And then he throws it up, it comes down again. This again is not how far the ball is away from him because he could be throwing it straight up in the air and having it come back down again. And this graph would still work. Because this is time versus height. It is not distance away from the person versus height. Okay? It's time versus height. All right, so the initial height is this right here. So that's that goes with that. The velocity, that also goes with initial. It's like at the beginning, how fast was the thing going up? And this is just the gravitational constant gravity and it depends on if you want to use feet or if you want to use meters yes uh, that means v sub zero that just means 
the, the velocity at time zero. But here's what you're going to need to do with this whole thing. If I told you now that we were in the United States, so we were going to be using feet, and I am talking about a fish. Let's say I'm out on my dock, and I catch a little sunfish, and uh, I want to let him back in the water, but instead of being nice and just laying him in the water and letting him swim away, I take him and decide he'll never probably have another chance to fly again. Right? So I take Mr. Sonny, and they're tough little fish, they'll be fine, and I whip them up in the air, okay? And and uh, he's, uh, he's going to be a flying fish for a short period of time. Uh, and he will eventually reach his highest point, and then he'll come back down again. Okay? So, uh, and then he'll probably belly flop unless he's really well trained to, like, you know, hit nose first. And then, yeah. So, I could write an equation for all of that. Since I'm doing it in feet in the United States here, I'd use thir the 32. And then since I, I'm going to say that I threw him up at 30 feet per second, so that's my velocity. Notice I did it in feet to match these. Okay, so 30 feet per second would go right there. And you just say 30. Not say the feet per second, that's assumed. And the last thing would be the height. Well, that's how high off the ground am I? Well, I might measure it off the water height. So let's say my dock is three feet up off the water, and I'm standing on my dock. And then on top of that, I'm holding him about four feet up off of the dock. That makes a total of seven feet that the fish is off the ground in the first place. Here's what the equation would look like. I equals negative one half. That's how it always starts. The next part is I'm on in, in America, so I'm using 32 feet. If this was in like Germany, I'd use meters. Okay. What would you use in England? Still feet? Meters. Okay. All right. I thought we got our system from you guys. What's the deal? <laughs> yes, we were supposed to change back in like when I was in high school they were supposed to change it they even had a law a state law or a, a federal law that said we will change to the metric system as a country on this date and then when they got to that date they were like don't really want to change so they changed the law and said we're not changing the meters after all i know they should have changed it but they just didn't have the the will to do it i know i know and you wouldn't have to learn have two different systems of measurement yeah. don't have to have conversions yep it's all based on 10. It's a much better system. Anyway, there's a lot of people that are sentimental, like, I don't want to start measuring my cookies in grams. It's always been in cups and in, and in uh, you know. And they're just used to it. How about gallons of gas? Do we have to change the liters, too? It's just our liters. Yes. All right. Moving on. I just have to say, this next part to velocity is super simple. I said it was 30, so I just say 30x. Done. And the last part is the height, and I said I was at 7 feet off the water, so there we go, plus 7. See how this part, just the height, that part's how fast it was thrown. This is depending on feet or meters. All right. So I want you to write me an equation. I'm going to tell you a different story now, and see if you can write me the equation for this. All right? Okay. So here's the story. Uh, I am out, uh, after I've, I'm done with my Halloween, um, I come back and there's this kid who's, as I'm walking back to my house, who's got my pumpkin and he's got it raised up over his head. Okay. And he's about to launch the pumpkin cause he's, he's he wants to see it splatter all over my driveway. Uh, so Thankfully, I stopped him just in time. But here's what would have happened. He was in the United States, so we're going to measure it in feet. He was going to throw the pumpkin, but since he was kind of small, a little wimpy kid, I'm guessing he mostly could do is like five feet per second of initial velocity. Okay, so he's, he was going to try to launch that thing up. And then uh, let's say that the pumpkin, being kind of a smallish kid, I'm saying the pump, I'm thinking the pumpkin is only maybe four feet off the ground and he's holding it up. Okay? So, there's an equation for that. I'll say it again. He was holding it four feet off the ground. He's going to launch it at about five feet per second. And we did it in feet. All right. Don't show me because there's too, too many like numbers to, to, to read. 
but write it on yours, and I'm going to have you show you somebody else and see if they've got the same thing, or you're going to have to admit that you have no idea what I'm talking about. All right, show a kid near you. I'll pause for a second. Okay, here we go. There is your answer. Raise your hand if you had it right. Okay, good. Now, what do we do with this? Well, we graph it, but I can save you a little bit of time because this part right here, can you do that in your head so you don't have to type all that junk? What would it be? Negative 16. So you can go ahead and, and type this in your calculator now. Y equals negative 16 X squared plus five X plus four. Now I'm gonna ask you two questions about it. I'm gonna ask you how high did the pumpkin go? What was the highest it ever went? And I'll warn you, it won't go up much higher than four feet because the kid wasn't throwing it very fast. And then gravity takes it over and takes it back down again. All right, so it's not going to be much higher than four. And that's called the vertex. You need to know how to second calculate the vertex. I'll show you that in a minute in case you forgot. And this spot is not where it landed, it's when it landed. So how long would that pumpkin be in the air before it splatters all over my drive? All right, so that's the vertex and also known as the maximum, if you're looking on the calculator. And that's called the zero. I'll give you a second to see if you know how to do with the calculator. If nothing else, type in the equation. Get that. The vertex, the maximum, the zero. See, it's on the board. Here. All right, I'll pause for a minute. Well, when I hit graph, that's what mine looked like. Now, yours might have looked different depending on your window. But I'm going to go invest with my window because I don't need it to go up so high. Uh, my window right now is going up higher than it needs to. So I'm going to change my Y max, the highest that it goes, to, I'm going to say like 7 feet maybe is the highest it could go, and I'm probably less than that. And then I'm going to change my, well, the other numbers look okay. So you can always play with the window to make it look nicer. Okay, if you want your X to change, that's your left, right. Could do that even more if I wanted to, but okay. Now, you go second, calculate maximum for four. I'm just going through this in case you forgot it from the other day when I shut the touch. The left, the either the left of my highest point, I hit enter. Right bound, get to the right of the highest spot and hit enter. And then right on the highest spot, that is guess, in case I'm guessing where it is, it's about there, and I hit enter. And there you go. 0.15 and 4.39. Do you get how it did not go up very much higher than the kid threw it in the first place? Okay. All right, I'll come and check. All right, so handled that little technical issue on a calculator, but what does this mean? What is the 0.15? That is the time. That's 0.15 seconds after the kid started to throw the thing. So the thing only went up for a teeny tiny bit of time. And then after that, it goes back down again. How long before it hits the ground? Well, then we've got to do this other point right here. And to find that, we need to do what's called the zero. Everybody, if you second, calculate the zero. Second, calculate the zero. Number two. And this one, you go, the zero's down here again. So I need to get to the left of it, which is like right about there, and to the right of it, which is right about there. And you might be saying, that's above and below, Mr. Server, you've lost your mind. No, it's to the left and to the right. Yes, it's above it, but it's also to the left of it. So when they ask you to get to the left of it, get over right about here. There we go, I'm to the left of my spot. It's above it, yes, but it's also to the left. Enter, and then to the right of it means go just a little past it, good enough. And then guess, that means get right on top of it. And that's close enough. Don't be a perfectionist on that because it doesn't matter. And there you go, 0.68. So that thing's going to hit the pavement less than a second after the kid throws it. 0.7 seconds after the kid throws it. Uh, it would be true, except that it didn't happen. If it was, I can think of who it would have been. But anyway. Now, 
I think now that I've kind of showed you that, you can picture how you could actually you could actually see these things happen in the real world. Something that might be more likely, okay, is I'm going to tell you a story. I want you to write me an equation. Just write the equation. That's all I'm asking right now. All right. So you go out in your backyard, and uh, you had woken out of a deep sleep because you heard this weird noise. So, of course, being the uh, smart kid in the movie, you walk into the backyard by yourself, and there is this, uh, yes, he's slender, and he's kind of grayish green, uh, and he's got a really big head and really big eyes, long little fingers. Anyway, uh, and he's playing with your soccer ball. And uh, so he, he doesn't see you at all, thankfully. Uh, and he winds up and just whaps that soccer ball off the ground. And, of course, you've got your Google glasses on. And so it's able to identify that it is an alien. Uh, and your Google glasses can also tell you how fast things are going. And it, it notes that the soccer ball has an initial velocity of 75 feet per second. <laughs> then, since the soccer ball was sitting on the ground, that also tells you something important. How high would that soccer ball go? I said, I said the velocity in feet, and therefore that was your hint that we should use. Uh, what did I say again? 75? 75. All right, so you can start with this. The next thing, always negative one half. The next thing, depends on feet or meters, and it was feet, so 32. Next thing is next foot. Then the velocity, 75. Yeah. And then, how high off the ground was it? It was at zero off the ground. So can I put plus zero? Yes. Do I even have to have anything there? No. Plus zero doesn't really do anything, so I can just wipe it out. And then I can put that in my gut. Find the maximum. Second, calculate maximum. You see how handy this could be in case aliens ever land in your backyard? And your Google glasses? Which don't exist. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't. It, it really has amazing potential, the whole Google glasses idea. It really does. They, well, it, Google is actually working on them. They don't exist yet like they haven't. I'm sure prototypes exist, but they haven't sold them. Yet. But they will, if if they can get it to work, that will be pretty transformative. I mean, you know, I could see them easily being built into like sunglasses and stuff that look more normal. And then you could be seriously walking around and, and you know, Anytime you want it to be on, all you'd have to do is like push a little button on the cord that could be in your pocket. And you could like push the button and like it could identify all the people in the room. If you'd already pulled it, it wouldn't automatically know them. But if you pro program faces, like Apple's got that thing. I bet you Apple, Apple should make this. Because then they could hook it up to your photos in your iTunes library. And so then you could have, recognize any face that was in your, your, your pictures. Yes, the FBI has that technology too. So theirs is probably way better than the Google. Just like, did you know that you have GPS, right? But do you know that there's something called military GPS, which is like 10 times more accurate? Well, one of the things they, they don't want GPS to be accessible to every person, be like fully really good GPS, because they're afraid the terrorists could like get things that would be super easy and program them to like blow up when they hit certain coordinates or whatever. I'm recording and that's okay. I think this is interesting stuff. So. All right, we are trying to find the height, the highest the ball ever went. Okay, so you're trying to find the maximum. Second calculate maximum. All right, I'm gonna pause and get the, my stuff in the calculator. Okay, so I got the right equation in there now, but when I hit graph, it doesn't look like a parabola. You gotta think about your window and say, oh, I must be zoomed in too far. This is going up way higher than last time. So I go to my window and I change it from Y maximum being seven. Well, I'm gonna maybe make it like 90 or something. 
I'm gonna say 91 just because I can't reach the zero button. But, but anyway, and now I'm gonna hit graph to see if it looks better. Okay, but now I gotta go farther to the right because I'm only going x distance is only like two. Well, maybe now the x distance is gonna be more like four seconds or something. So I'm gonna go to window, change my x max to like maybe five, and then graph it again. And now that much looks much nicer. All right. So now, what's the highest that the ball went when the alien kicked it? You got a second to calculate the maximum. And I go to the left of it, which I am already. I go to the right of it. Arrow to the right. Farther. There, up to the right of it. Here. And then guess means get close. Good enough. And my final answer is. Looks like 87.9 feet, or about 88 feet. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. At what time did it reach that height? After about how long? 2.34 seconds. Now, just think for a second. Would it be logical to say that the total time it was in the air would be about double that? From the ground up, yeah, because it was kicked from the ground, the time up and the time down should be about the same, shouldn't they? All right, so let's just see if that's true. So now we got to go to the zero thing. So I'm going to go out to just my graph again, and the zero is that point down here. Uh, it's right there. And then I do second calculate the zero to find it. So I go second calculate the zero. And then I go to the left of it, which is actually above it. And I am now to the left of it. Good enough. And then I'm going to go to the right of it. So i got to keep arrowing until I'm past it. There. And then I hit enter. And then guess means get close to on it. And that's close enough. Actually, that's quite close enough. That's close enough. Enter. And there we go. 4.68. Is that double about 2.3? Uh-huh. Makes sense. All right. So now. You could say that that ball that the alien kicked was in the air for like four seconds. Yeah, that's a, that's a big flip. Maybe he's, maybe he's, uh, <laughs> maybe he wasn't an alien after all. Maybe it was just somebody shaved the Sasquatch and painted him gray. And that's what it was. Okay. Anyway, your homework for today looks like this. And it's like, after how many seconds does Jesse hit the water? All right, and this is one where it's like, what's the upward velocity of the water? All right, now there's only one other thing that I, a tool that I want to show you, um, and that is, let's say I don't want this spot or this spot. What if I want another spot? What if I want the spot after like this many seconds? Let's say that that's after like three seconds. The alien kicked the thing. Watch what happens. I'm going to drag this off. Did you know I could do that? Drag it off the screen of my calculator. Isn't that cool? All right. Anyway. Um, and if I want to know where four seconds would be, I can just count over and go one, two, three, four seconds. Go up there and say that's the answer. Okay. But there's a way to do it on your calculator. Everybody get that back up in your calculator. And hit second calculate. A second calculate. Which one do you think it is? Nope. I don't have another line there. It's not an intersect because there's no line. Value, you're right. Value, and then it says x equals. X is time, right? So x equals 3. And then I can say after 3 seconds, the ball was right there. And it's 81 feet at 3 seconds. All right. Last kind is, what if they don't tell you the time? What if they say... When was the ball at 75 feet off the ground? That's the kind where you put in, I want a line at 75 feet off the ground. Here's 75 feet, let's say. So I want a line right there. Do you know what that line's equation would be? Y equals 75. So you just go into the Y equals screen. Y equals, and go down and add in another line, 75. And then when I hit graph, I have a line going through there, 
And now to find out when was the ball at 75 feet, does it make sense it was at 75 feet twice? Once on the way up and once on the way down. And then you could find second, calculate the intersect. Intersect number five. Now I've got two lines that are intersecting. You can just say enter, enter, and your last one is like get close. Well, that's the first one on the way up. I'm close to it. So there we go. Intersection is 1.44 seconds and 75 feet. And if I want the other one, I go second, calculate the intersect. And now I'm going to go closer to this other one. Okay, so first, there's I'm on the first line. Now I'm on the second line. And now the third one is get close to this. So I'm close to it, and I hit enter. And it tells me it was also at 3.24 seconds that it was at 75 feet. All right, so now you should be a serious ninja when it comes to balls being thrown in the air. You can write the equation for them. You can figure out how high they went, figure out how long they were in the air, and as long as you know that you're on the planet Earth. And in fact, if they tell you you're on planet Pluto, which is smaller than our planet, then the things would go higher in the air when you throw them. If you're on, like, Saturn or one of the other planets that's way bigger than us, then that's got much more gravity. I don't know if you've ever thought of that, but whenever they have guys walking around on other planets, uh, like, if, if, if in the real world it was like what it would be in the real world, if you get off on, like, planet Jupiter, okay, it's way bigger than us, it would be so heavy you'd be able to be able to lift, be able to lift your legs. It's not like you'd be running around. If the aliens are chasing you up there, they'd get you because, you know, you, you'd be, like, trying to walk and it would be so hard to move because you're being dragged down. And here's one more kind of crazy thought. The sun, most gravity of all in the neighborhood, right? It holds in all these planets and it's like orbits. So that means the sun's super heavy, right? But this sun is actually made up of just gas. There's nothing solid about the sun. It's all gas. So if you had super shields on your spaceship, you could fly right through the sun because it's just gas. Now, it's extremely hot, so you'd have to have amazing shields. But if you could, you could. Now, here's the last thing. How can gas be that heavy? Isn't that crazy? It's just gas. How can it be that heavy to create that much gravity? There's just so much of it. That's right. If the sun was hollow, a million Earths could fit inside. A million of our Earths. And it's only a middle sized stuff. Okay. There's something called red giants that are significantly bigger. Our sun, compared to some other suns, our sun's puny compared to some other ones. Not in our solar system, I think. Do you mean in our. There you go, in the Milky Way, I'll buy that. All right. Okay. That's enough for today. For today.